in this video, James Lucas from Succulents Australia is going to take us through a detailed look at Hawarthia varieties. We'll show you how to repot Hawarthias and we'll also show you how to divide them or remove the pups. You may have seen the video that we did on attenuata, but I thought today we'd just show you some other really special Hawarthias and show you what their root systems are like and how they react in the soil and again a few tips about variegates, how to handle them. This is Hawarthia Milky Way. This is a really beautiful variegate because it does have really green windows. We call these windows on top and lovely white inner parts. So let's have a look at the root system on this one because it's actually similar to attenuata. And here you'll be able to see how different they really are. Look at that really big white fleshy roots. Now that tells me it's a very good soil mix and it's happy in this mix. Look at that. Okay, so we have here young pups and plenty of them, already well rooted. Now, this one is reverted, pure green. We won't pot this one. But this one is color. We call color, or variegation color. Remove dead leaves, old leaves, clean them up, tidy it up. Now, I'm thinking about, we'll put in, this into a bigger pot. Now, we, look, collectors really like to use these square pots. Here we have to look after these roots. So we're going to about one third fill this pot, well it's nearly half actually, with the mix. Then a little bit of fertiliser, not too much, maybe a quarter of a teaspoon. Then put it so the roots hang down. All right, turn it on its side a little bit. See that shaking there? That moves the soil between the roots. And again, a little bit more shaking. And you see new roots starting to form there. We need to get those in there. Tuck them into the soil. Now the Japanese tell me that the roots of a Hawthia are more important than the top. And they're talking about growing it from a breeding point of view and a, just a growing and health point of view it's more important for them to have good roots than it is the top. Now here we have Akadama. This is a really nice type of clay to top your pot off with. You can mix this in with a soil mix. Very good for the plants, high in nutrients. And there we have one potted Milky Way. Now we're going to have a look at Truncata. Now this is one of my treasures. This was an import from Japan. And look at the size of the heads, like the monsters. And this is not fully growing yet, it'll grow more. Now, they say one of the secrets to growing truncatas is you should only have between three and four leaves on here, then you get the maximum width. So what we're gonna do here, we're gonna remove some old leaves carefully. There we are. Now let's it's not too tight, see, but we give it a gentle squeeze. This will help it ease out because you want to keep all those special roots intact. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. See, now look at those roots. Massive compared to attenuatas and other forms like that. And see it's actually growing now, it's got a healthy new start to it. And again, what I was talking about, these hollow roots, old roots, that have been reabsorbed. You can see they're quite short when it was potted. You can take those off. Now this leaf is had it, I can tell. So we take him off, it's actually started to rot a bit, so it's actually very timely potting. This one. Clean him up around here, get rid of all the rubbish. Now that root's still fleshy and hard, but it is old, it will be gone by the next potting season. And you can see the strong new white roots. And look at this one here. That's only probably about six or seven months old, this root. And it's all the way down there. Now this is why you need a really deep pot for truncatas. And again, we'll try and preserve as many of these roots as we can to minimize the shift 
or the transplant problems. See, look how long that is. They're a desert plant and they seek water down deep. Now this one is gonna go into a bigger pot because I really want this to grow big and hard and get really big flowers so that we can do some pollination. Again, only about a third full. And we tuck those all in carefully, just try to face them all downwards. You hold it just below the pot line here. Now you can use a scoop, but in a way, I like my hand. I reckon it's better to use. I can feel better what's going on with the plant. And at this time you support the plant so that you, it's in the center of the pot. Now about now, we really need to shake it so that the roots can retain that spread out look. See, it's not quite right yet. See, it's shaking all down, not pushed down too hard. I want to be careful of those roots. You want to firm, not too hard. Because remember, this mix has to be light and full of air. We tested this mix a while back in a container. Uh, it actually holds 50% water when you fill it up. And so, you know, if you've got a litre of soil, it, half a litre of water will then pour out of it. Now here, these plants are always topped with, in Japan, Akadama. Again. There we go. Here we're going to start showing you, rather than potting all of these, we're going to show you what some of the roots look like on some of these plants. And they're all a bit different. And so you sort of need different pots for different plants. But uh, again, it's, it's the importance of having a, a really good root system. Now again, you feel this, this is really tight. I can, I can feel it's quite firm. It's softer down here, right? But quite firm here. This is ready for a repot. Even if it doesn't look it, but this is a picter and it really would benefit from a repot. So again, give it a squeeze, ease the plant out, because I don't, really don't want to break roots if I can help it. Gently tease out the soil. And again, you can see a similar sort of root system as the trunk carter. Okay new fleshy white root that'll be a main feeder root going down there the support root it doesn't really have any old roots there that it want to die yet but you can see they're coloring up by this winter this will be gone and it will have a couple of new ones will replace it this is what they seem to do these plants but look at that look at the length of those you know for such a little plant this is why they say the best roots grow in japan it's the potting mixes they use over there. Now this is a copy of a Japanese potting mix. It's the best we can do in Australia. They do not use pine bark, they use other sort of plant material over there, but they do use pumice, they don't use scoria, but they do use akadama. So I've tried to make a bit of a blend, very similar to what the Japanese will use, and I've done it with Australian materials. Now this one's tiger pig. Now it's sort of not really ready for a pot, but it is a fabulous variegate. I don't think anyone's got this in Australia yet. We imported this about two years ago. And as you can see, they're just starting to get pups. So now it's time to think about it. But this is a really good tiger pig because it's well colored. Unfortunately, it's throwing too many pure yellow pups, but it really is a good one. I'll show you another tiger pig in a minute that's not as good as this one, but it does throw some good pups. Let's have a look at him. Now, let's have a look at these. We'll take a couple of puppies off here. Just ease them down. Oh yes, nice one. Now, that is not a plant that will grow. So these two are wasted. I will keep them just in case, but I can see that the other young green pup is also very well colored. This one here is very good. 
Yes, look at that one. This is a this is a good, going to be a good coloured one. Yes, and I reckon this one might be a green. I can't see any colour in him. Now these four young plants, I'm going to let them dry out for a week or so because they all have a wound, an open wound here. Now if we pot that and put that into the soil, wet soil now, you really could get a fungal issue. So it's actually better to dry these out for about seven days and let, them, let the wounds heal up. It'll probably go back into a similar size pot because it's just not that big. Now these things rarely grow variegates from leaf. But we'll repot this to the top. About half full. Fresh fertilizer. And the roots will grow down into that one. And again, it does have the strong heavy roots. So support it, move the soil around it again. And just get so the roots are just covered. And you have a bit of a lip of the pot there, just enough to hold some akadama. And then you can water, and the akadama holds the water to allow the water to go in when it's dry. So you don't have to overflow your pot. That's one of the reasons why we use these topping mixtures. Because it holds the water, and then it goes in when you've got it dry. Now this little baby came in from Japan. I think approximately two years ago. First time, the, the man had only a really new development in Japan and I really begged him for it. And uh, he did relent and give me one, which I was really happy about. Because this is still a really new, a new attenuata. But look at it, it's, look, look at the red you get in the leaf. Absolutely beautiful. When it's stressed, it gets these red stripes and this is what I call silk variegation, really fine white lines. Now this one here, I definitely want to move it to a slightly bigger pot. I reckon it was a bit confined in this size. But look, we now have two babies. And what I'll do is get down low with your thumb. Oh, snap him off like that. And it comes away with a root. So we're lucky, this one's ready to go. And some more young roots. So these are almost ready to go. If we pot them into dry potting mix, we won't water them for a week or so, then they'll be off. Now these I'm going to discard. This is the original species that it came from. It is a poor form of attenuata, but I don't really want to grow it. It's just plain green. So we're going to get rid of those. And what we'll do, it, you can see later in the year, this is a good time to pot this now because these will grow all year round that we will end up with some more babies here. I can see another one, two, three, four, five, six, maybe seven coming. And again, you can see a fine root system. They do not have those heavy tap roots that picta, truncatas, and things like that have. You can see very healthy, new growing tips, yellow. Look at that, all white new growing roots, very good. And I'm not gonna root prune much more than this. I'll probably take nip this one off about here just to make it easy potty, but that's it. Go. This is a beautiful truncata variegate. Now you can see there has some plain green, some colored, colored, and possibly plain green. Now it's not a great truncata. It's almost like a mixture of more arni and truncata, but the variegation gives it its value and its beauty even though it's not the great form of some of the other truncatas that we can show you. You can see it's got the potential to have some really good pups with it when you see that sort of colouring. So again, we're going to squeeze this. This has not really outgrown the pot yet, but let's see how big the root system really is in this. Not too deep. Interesting. Yeah. I think that mix might be a bit heavy. But... It's happy and healthy. And again, you see there's big, heavy roots. And actually, they're a bit undersized, I think, for the size of the plant, but we'll get them off. And look at that. You can see how the shoots come out. It's re-rooted and gone down there. So this pup here, well-rooted already. Look at that, really nice. No problems about potting that one up. Let's have a look at this little baby here. 
thumb down deep. Oh, there we go. Okay, got a root two. Again, good time to get these out. Oh, there we go. Look at that. That's a nice big one. That's good colour. That'll show up as a really good plant. And at this point, we're going to leave this alone. You will take off this the old root there. Take those off. Maybe this leaf is nearly finished. Maybe he can come off sideways and out. Just clean up any rubbish around there. And then we'll put that in a similar size pot again. But I'm changing the potting mix. This one looks a little bit heavy to me. And I don't think it penetrated deep enough. I've never repotted this one, so I've only had it a couple of years, so it's actually grown. Got a yellow pup on the side, which may not survive, but there is another young one coming down here. So I'm not cutting anything off this one. I'll just be repotting it. I, I think Moana and I have big roots, generally speaking. So let's have a look at it and see what they do. Again, a squeeze. Yeah. Very rare to see a Moanite that's really nicely coloured like this one. Yep, again. Ah, it's a very good example, this one. It's, this one's got everything that I really need to show you. Here is the old root. When we potted it, it's completely hollow and empty. Well, nearly. It's just jelly. Gone. Take them off. These are good condition. This is the brand new one coming out now, and that will continue to grow over the year. That one there, that will be dead by next potting time. So you saw the size of this one, the hollowed out one. That's That replaced that one. Now this will start to replace the other ones. So two or three major feeder roots for a plant this size, or tap root really, and then these are the feeders. Right. Hawthia Skinneri variety. Unfortunately, I can't read the Japanese name. This is one of the hard leaf ones. Now, again, this is pretty new and pretty rare, and we were lucky to get it from Japan. So I've never checked this one, but I have a feeling it's going to be fibrous. So when we got it, it wasn't. Mm. More fibrous, but also heavy rooted. And we definitely, this is the first pup of this one. So I'm really looking forward to getting in. And this is why variegated, you know, Hawthias and stuff, they're so rare because I've had this for two or three years, first young pup, first one. And I only got this as a tiny little plant like that originally. So two to three years later, I've got that and one pup. It's not a big producer. This is why some of these plants are really, really unusual and hard to get. This one is a springbok valensis type. Now, these types have the beautiful brown on the inside of the leaf and fabulous shiny windows with beautiful patterns on them. And they really do, they catch the light. This is where, I don't know, Hawthias just had this beauty about them that, you know, it's hard to describe sometimes. The colors, the shapes, the shininess. Look at the shininess of that one and the shapes, how compact it is. So. This is the rare beauty of Hawarthias. This is what makes growing Hawarthias so rewarding. Now again, this will be, ooh, two babies here. I think we're gonna find I know what they're from. They're leaf cuttings I've done originally. Okay, ease it out gently. Not break any roots. Oh, now that, so it's nice and dry which means that, you know, it doesn't hold water too much. But look at that. Again, the big heavy roots. Right. And more new ones developing. It's actually a really good time to repot these actually, because they're still gonna grow before summer comes and they settle down. You know, big new roots. Actually, no old ones died off in this one, I don't think. Yeah, no, nah, they're all still got juice in them and pretty healthy. So I'm leaving all those. I'm not gonna be pulling any off. A little bit of old one left in there. But I think I'm going to leave that as is when we repot that one. I'm not going to touch it. Beautiful, beautiful plant. Let's have a look at the babies. Yeah, now I have a feeling this was a leaf cutting. What we do periodically, we take off some of these lower leaves 
And what I like to do is you, you, you might take them off like that. You go down and just wriggle them a bit. That's maybe not such a good break. But you go down sideways. Oh, that's better. And what you do, you just tuck it under the plant like that. And they don't die, but they throw up two little pups. That's what these little pups are from there. Again, heading off again, really good roots. More feeder roots on this one than some of the others, but really good root systems. So there we go. After a couple of years, we have two young pups on this one. Yeah, it's really lovely when you divide them up and you get babies, you know, you wait three or four years and you get babies off them. It really is, that, that, that's the reward of these plants. We hope you enjoyed a detailed look at a worthy of varieties. Subscribe to the YouTube channel for regular updates on new videos on succulents and a whole range of other garden plants. And as always, good luck with your gardening.